let's imagine that this one synapse allows in enough positive charge to get to minus 45, then just oops, then just A would cause an action potential in C. But let's instead imagine that the sodium input here only gets us to minus 60. There's no action potential. But what if both go at the same time, and this gets an additional minus 20? So both together perhaps might do minus 10, minus, or sorry, plus 10, plus 15. So this alone gets you to minus 60. This alone gets you to minus 55. But put them both together, and they sum to minus 45, and you get a new action potential. So in this case, the combination of inputs from A and the inputs from B, this plus 10 getting you to minus 60, and at the same time plus 15 getting you to minus 45 gets a new action potential. Okay. So this is two words. It's convergence because two combine. And this example I gave you where the two combined will get an action potential, but neither one alone is called facilitation. Now, for using these in neural circuits, it's actually more important that you know what they are and how to use them than that you know the names for them. So you may want to use the names, but it's really more important that you understand how they combine. Convergence can both be for facilitation or, in this case, inhibition. So in this case, it's still convergence. But in this case, B might be opening a potassium channel, allowing potassium to leave, and that would be inhibitory. It would be more negative here. And that might block a neurotransmitter that opened a sodium channel and allowed sodium in. But the combination balanced out, so the result might be no change still minus 70 millivolts. Okay, Maybe the sodium entry in loan would have been enough to get to minus 45 and start an action potential. But with this potassium leaving, that blocks it. It inhibits it. Finally, we can also talk about feedback, in which A is stimulatory to B. But there's also a branch back to C, in which this would be negative feedback. And you can also have positive feedback. Okay, So in this case, the result would be, let's imagine you had action potentials coming in here. So let's imagine we had. Sodium coming in from these synapses. We get enough here. So here's one, two, three. We get an action potential. We release neurotransmitter, open more sodium channels. There's more sodium in here. We get a new action potential. That action potential goes on to do whatever it's going to do here. But of course, the action potential also goes here. And where are we? We're at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
six, seven, and we again allow sodium in. Remember that's excitatory to neuron C. We get to minus 45. We get a new action potential. But here, we open a potassium channel. That's inhibitory. So let's run through. We get inputs here, and those inputs are continuing. We continue to get action potentials here. So we continue to get more sodium in. We get an action potential. And right behind it, we get another action potential. As soon as the refractory period's over, we get another. So we have a chain of action potentials going down. And that causes something to happen down this branch of the chain. But in the time it takes for this action potential to get here, start a new action potential, and get back, we now suddenly get to inhibition. And at that point, now we have the combined, the sum, of our initial positives, our initial positive charge coming in here, combined with the inhibition here. And at that point, we stop the action potentials. So that's negative feedback. This whole thing is continued until the time when this gets back, open a bunch of uh, potassium channels, potassium leaves, and we stop it. Okay. After we've stopped it for a while, once this, these action potentials stop coming here, this stops and we can have a new set. Okay. That's negative feedback, and both negative and positive feedback circuits occur, and we'll talk about some of them.